Hi, and welcome to Huggins on Film. I'm your host, Kyle Huggins, and I am aware that it's been too damn long. As usual, it's just been a whole lot of scheduling conflicts. You know, I went to the Maryland Death Fest. Ended up getting really sick after that. Went back, you know, I've been working, just, just have not had time. My cousin got married, just way too much going on. So, luckily, I finally have some time to sit down and talk about a movie. The movie would be VHS 2. The uh, sequel to the found footage anthology VHS. <coughs> I wasn't crazy about the first one, to be honest. Really thought only like, one of the segments really worked. And the rest were mm, kind of middling at best. But this one had Gareth Evans doing a segment who directed The Raid Redemption. Amazing kung fu flick. Definitely, well, not kung fu, it's a, it's a martial arts flick. Same basic premise as Dread, but it really violent, really brutal. You've probably heard me talk about it before, but seriously, you need to check this movie out. It is awesome. And also had Jason Eisner, who did Hobo with a Shotgun. Now, I never saw the original trailer version of it in Grindhouse, because I've never seen Grindhouse. Because I just don't like Tarantino. And I couldn't even talk myself into Planet Terror because I see Rose McGowan standing there with an M16 replacing her leg, and... That's stupid. I'm sorry, that's... That's just stupid. It really is. I, I just... I couldn't reconcile. I was like... That is so dumb. Like, it just... It bothered me it was that aggressively dumb. So I never saw the trailer version. However, I do own the full-length movie on Blu-ray, and I love it. it. It's like watching an old Peter Jackson... It's like a Peter Jackson grindhouse flick. You know, it's, it's his level of uh, gore and humor. But it it's not a horror film, it's more of an exploitation film. And it stars Rutger goddamn Howard. You know, if anything, it's hard not to enjoy something when Rutger Hauer's in it. Because it's Rutger Hauer. He's awesome. You know it. I know it. Anyway, start with the wraparound segments, which are directed by Simon Barrett. He actually plays uh, one of the male lead in it, too. It's about two detectives who break into a house. And they're looking, they're looking for a college kid paid by his mom who... She's lost touch with him, she's worried about him. And they break into his house and he's got just stacks upon stacks upon stacks of VHSs. And they watch some, and, you know, they watch four of them. Which are the segments. It's... It's decent. I really like the ending of it. It had some great effects, too. But between the third and fourth segment, the events that ha something happens there, I'm not going to spoil it, but his reaction to it just completely unrealistic. It, and it, it annoyed me. It was, just, it was just a very unrealistic reaction to what was going on. And I mean, it was so off, it, it really kind of ruined the mood. But anyway, enough about that. First segment is directed by Adam Wingard, and it's called Clinical Trials. This could have been the best segment in the whole movie, but it's too short. The basic story is, guy has a horrific eye injury of some kind, he gets his eye replaced with a camera, and it's recording all of this, everything he sees. 
and he starts seeing dead people. Kind of an interesting idea. He also sees this one girl at the clinic as he's leaving. It's a rather attractive redheaded lass. I mean, it's not a natural red, but who cares? She's, she's very cute. That kind of a suicide girl thing going on. Fine with me. Very pro suicide girl here at Huckins on film. Seriously, Lass, call me. Anyway, he begins seeing ghosts. She shows up at his place. She has cochlear implants because she was deaf. She can hear ghosts. So it seems like this corporation has found a way to help you see and hear the dead. But like, I don't know if, if it's just an accident, if this corporation did it on purpose, because they really don't flesh out the story at all. It's like those two, they meet, they screw. And three minutes later, it's over. It just... Ah... Uh, where's the rest of the story? Well, I, I'd really like to see this expand into a full-length movie. So I, I think that's a really good premise there. I think you could totally do something with this. But it's just... It's way too short. So it just... It, it's like... Uh, Oh, oh, hi, little boss. How are you? That I really wanted to like it, but just the that was just such a uh, such a, a poorly fleshed out story that it really bugged me. It's like I said, I think this this could have actually made or pretty good full-length movie. And instead, it's just 20 minutes, and it's really, really left me wanting more. Second segment is done by Greg Hale and Eduardo Sanchez called A Ride in the Park. Generic zombie tale, really. It's. I mean, the effects are decent, but it's not interesting. Basically, the guy's on a ride through the park, comes upon a girl, he's trying to help her. She turns and bites him. He becomes a zombie, and he's got a camera strapped onto his bicycle helmet. So you're kind of just seeing things from the zombie's point of view. Watch Colin instead. If if you want a zombie flick with the zombie as a lead, with the, with the zombie in the lead, watch Colin. It's a British flick. It's pretty. It's a. It's a bit too long. It, it really could have used some paring down. But overall, it's a pretty solid movie. Watch that instead. This was just. I mean, granted, maybe I was just pissy because I I really wanted more of clinical trials. But yeah, I, I I did not care for a ride in the park. The third one is called Safe Haven, done by uh, Timo Jajanto. I probably totally screwed up his name, sorry about that, and Gareth Evans of The Raid. <laughs> this makes the whole movie worth it. Because this is crazy. It's a couple of journalists, and they're inside this compound trying to interview an obvious cult leader. <coughs> and it it gets weird. And also seeing as it's a Gareth Evans production, it gets 
bloody. Oh my god. It's a slow build, but as the events escalate, basically this cult goes full Jonestown. And heads are getting blown off, people are being poisoned. No, no, no. I'm not going to give away the best one. Because one character's fate in this is just... Holy shit. It's... It, it's really impressively done. The atmosphere is great. It just everything feels very off. And then once stuff starts going down, it gets really crazy. To the point that it can be kind of hard to watch. Because you know, Gareth, you know, the raid. It's a very kinetic movie. It it doesn't sit still very long. And when you add to it the conventions of found footage. The shaky cam gets kind of out of control. You know, it makes total sense in context. That doesn't change the fact that there are parts of the second half of this that are really hard to watch. Just, I mean, physically speaking, just... Ah! I... I need more eyes. I'm, I'm fairly certain a Prothean would have trouble with this. But all in all, it's well acted. I really like the conclusion. And like I said, when, when things finally go haywire, oh, they go bad. And I mean, heads are getting blown off left and right. And like I said, if you've seen the raid, you know Gareth Evans does not hold back on violence. It's it's incredibly visceral, just violent as hell. It it's a really really good movie. Um, yeah, I do have one no, another small problem with it. Fortunately, I can't talk about it, or I'm gonna spoil it. And I'm not. I don't want to do that. Seriously. This is totally worth it just for the safe haven short. Check it out just for that. And then finally we have the fourth one by Jason Eisner. Alien Abduction Slumber Party. Teenage Slumber Party gets attacked by aliens. This one sucked. Seriously, it was bad. I mean, I understand that trying to compete with Safe Haven is a very hard thing to do. But, uh, Alien Abduction Slower Party was... It, it was... It just felt tacked on. I mean, that, the title describes it all. He's good like that. You know, Hobo with a Shotgun is about a hobo with a shotgun. You know, very straightforward title. It tells you everything that's going on. But the the aliens look awful. The characters are really annoying teenagers. And all things being recorded by a dog that for some reason has a camera attached to it. So you've got this little little fluff of dog hair like right there the whole time. It's really, really fucking annoying. It's like, ah, yeah, this movie isn't that good. But could you get that out of the damn way? So yeah, I I really did not care for this one at all. I, I just, 
and of course it takes place at night. It's badly lit. You could you could barely see anything half the time. It's it seriously. It's one of those like yeah, this is a found footage film at its worst. I mean, it's better than some because at least something is happening. But it's a uh, oh yeah, this this is really bad. All in all, I I loved one of the segments. I I could have loved two. The other two were completely disposable. The wraparound was all right. I I I liked this better than the first one. I you know if come when it comes on Netflix or if you know. You, don't mind the because I, I paid ten bucks on Amazon for it. I don't have an iTunes account. I think it's free on there. If it's here for like five bucks or less, I would totally recommend it. But yeah, all in all, I I can't get that emphatic about it. Also, one last thing that and it annoyed me with the first one too, but it's even worse here. All of the segments are clearly shot with digital equipment. Which means somebody took all this and transferred it to VHS. Why the fuck not, I guess? I just. Like. Ugh. It's just like, you know what, guys? If you had just come up with a better title, you could have gotten around this. Well, it's the same thing happened in the first one. It's not VHS, but all this footage is obviously shot with through digital means, which means somebody took all this digital stuff and transferred it to VHS for some reason. Makes no sense. Very annoying. Like I said, that's not a deal breaker for the movie or anything, but it just it irritates me a little bit. But uh, overall, yeah, if you can catch it on the cheap or for free, I would totally do it. Like I said, Safe, ha Safe Haven is great. It's worth it just for that. And seriously, uh, hang on. Uh, don't mind me, I blank from. Seriously, uh, Mr. Wingard, if you ever read this, totally do a longer version of clinical trials. Because you, you had something really good there. Just didn't follow through. You know, the conclusion was just way too rushed. It really needed to be longer. I, um, the um, Asian short, uh, the Asian anthology called Three Extremes actually had one of their shorts called Dumplings expanded into a full-length movie. I haven't watched that yet. I keep meaning to, just, you know, time. But, yeah, it's been done before. You get the chance, definitely look into that. Um... I know I did the first round of the hockey playoffs, too, and now we're in the finals, and I didn't do rounds two and three. So, I'm just going to do a, a short bit on the finals here at the end. I'm going to say Blackhawks in seven. I, I feel like the Blackhawks have played much better competition in the West than the Bruins have in the East, which makes the Bruins look deceptively good, in my opinion. Also, okay, David Krejci's been amazing in the playoffs. He really has been. But Boston's scoring is... It's been really concentrated on the Krejci-Horton-Lucic line. You know, I know the defense scored like 97 goals versus the Rangers 
But other than that, up front, they're, they're not getting a ton of offense behind, behind those guys. Well, the Hawks haven't had anyone as dominant as Krejci, they've been a lot more balanced. That's really the main reason I like the Hawks here. I mean, defensively, yeah, I think Char is the best defenseman in this series. But overall, I mean, you've got Norris winners on each side. I actually kind of think Chicago's defense is a little deeper, but not by much. So I, I give Chicago a minor edge there, not a humongous one. Goal. Yeah, I think Rask is better, but Crawford's been really good. You know, I think a lot of people are sleeping on how good Corey Crawford has been for the Blackhawks. So I think I think the Bruins have an edge there, but I don't think it's as pronounced as a lot of people may think. Specialty teams, two great penalty kills and two struggling power plays. This this series is going to be all five on five. Specialty teams really aren't going to be a factor. Boston does have a significant advantage on face-offs. And don't forget, this team can skate too. Like, I think this might be a low-scoring series, but there's going to be chances at both ends. You know, I, it's going to be a fun series to watch. But I think uh, Chicago's scoring depth is going to prove to be uh, the difference. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to change my pick a little here. I'm going to say Hawks in seven. Also, uh, after that lockout, uh, Mr. Jeremy Jacobs, go fuck yourself. I hope you die. Anyway, this has been Huckins on Film with a little bonus Hucks on Pucks. This is Kyle Huckins. Fucking off, eh?